In this video, I want to show you how to uh, generate a simulation of uh, noisy data. That's data that might have me measurement errors in it. And then we'll look at uh, doing a plot of that data and fitting trend lines to the data. So um, many of these things we've discussed previously, and I'm doing them again, uh, perhaps with a little bit different uh, perspective. Okay, so let me begin here. Um, to begin, I'm going to uh, generate um, my uh, x-axis variables, my independent variable. I'll put x, and then my function that I'm interested in is a simple one, y equals x squared. So right here, I'll just take those values of x and produce x squared. Then here in the C column, I'm going to generate the noise here, noise. And um, then um, right here, I'm going to add everything up to generate the value of Y. So Y is going to be equal to um, 0 0.5 times noise. I'll just write 0 0.5 times <coughs> whatever's in the first column, which will be the, I mean, the second column, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 0 0.5 times noise. Noise in the third column. 0 0.5 times n plus uh, whatever's in the second column, which will be x squared there. So that's what I'm going to be putting in uh, column D is uh, uh, the, the data signal, the simulation of the noisy data signal. So x, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and I'm going to drag that down. But let me first here put x squared, y equals um, whatever is in the first column, uh, put an equal sign, and put this, and then times that again there, and uh, noise. I'm going to use the random function, which generates random variables uniformly distributed over 0, 1. Right. And so the noise, let me, um, let me add numbers to the noise, which can be positive or negative. Now, if the variables are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1, I'm going to um, make them uniformly distributed between negative 1 half and positive 1 half. So let's see how I can do that. I'm going to put uh, R don't want that there. Oh, so already this got messed up here. Let me hit escape. Ah, I'm messing it up already. Okay, this is going to equal uh, this times this. I hit return. Now right here, I'm going to put equal, and it's going to be R A N D ran the random number function. I'm going to subtract 0.5 from it. So what I have right here is a random variable uniformly distributed between negative one half and positive one half. Okay. Now uh, right here, let me. Uh, let me change this. I'm not going to do 0 0.5 times that. I'm just going to do the noise plus x squared. Okay, so this is going to equal this value plus this value. And I'll hit return. Okay, so that's everything I have right here. Let me just drag this down one there. Okay, now I'm going to drag this everything all together. Watch how I'm going to do this. I don't think I've done this yet. I'm going to select all of these. 
and then I'm going to drag it all the way down to uh, let's try here see what we get 3.2 I don't want I just want three I should have gone right to here there we go so uh, here are the X values right here this is X squared this is the noise which is going to get added to X squared and then this is our noisy measurement which Y is equal to the noise plus X squared so now let me plot that data okay now to do that first I'm just going to just select all of this there uh, now I'm going to go into insert and over here to scatter chart and I'll do right here so there is my graph my noisy data graph right there look at that pretty noisy huh now notice though these aren't the X values here what these are actually are just the row numbers I want to put the X values there so how am I going to do that I've asked you to investigate this previously and um, I'm going to go a right click I'm going to right click on the on the chart area and then I'll go to select data now this window comes up I can do a few things in this window one I can name the chart uh, noisy data I'll call it noisy data and now it lets me put in the X values the X values are going to be what's in this column right here so these will be the X values and if I done that right that should then put in the X values there so there we go we go from 0 up to 3 on the X values so here's my noisy data now uh, let me uh, do a, uh, a uh, curve fit to that so I'm going to add a trend line now this the default in Excel is it adds a linear trend line which is exactly what is done there and this is not a great fit um, as I sometimes say it might be good enough for government work but um, the uh, uh, we can get an equation for that trend line if we choose we can click right down here display equation on the chart and now so I select the equation by clicking on it and I want to make that that text a bit bigger so go back up here click home and then right here this makes the text bigger so let me make it bigger like that and now this is my equation of that straight line but you know I say I'm not particularly happy with that maybe let me do a different trend line so I'll shift uh, shift click or right click on the curve again and do add trend line and then I'll go up here to polynomial and I'll add a second order polynomial and display the equation so here's that equation for the second order polynomial so I could just put this like right here if I choose and then I'll increase the size on that there we go second order polynomial now there we go so this is the second order polynomial fit and uh, you know that the noise free data was just y equals x squared and the, the second order polynomial fit is almost y equals x squared there's a small linear term and a small uh, perhaps a not so small constant term right here so this is my best second order polynomial fit to to this noisy data this is my best straight line fit to the noisy data and then I can do other data fits if I so choose there so that's uh, another uh, quick example and uh, what we did here is we changed the uh, the sequence of X values and I showed you how we might go about uh, simulating uh, noisy data if for some reason we may want to do that 
and, and sometimes it is desirable to, uh, to generate uh, simulations. Uh, we might be trying to actually match real data and seeing how we can get simulated data that looks almost the same as the real data. That would be one way of figuring out the model, um, uh, the uh, theoretical or abstract model that generated the real data. So with that, I'm uh, done with this example. See you next time.